In this video we're going to look at the Kaplan Meyer estimator as a, a maximum likelihood estimator. Um, some call it a, a non-parametric MLE. Um, and so a little background first, let T be the failure time, C be sensor time, and X be the minimum of the event versus uh, sensor time. Um, we do know whether we observe the event or whether it, the, it's censored. Uh, we have the density for the failure time, the CDF for the failure time, which is the probability of being less than or equal to T. We have the survival function, which is one minus F of T, and we have a hazard function, which is sort of the instantaneous uh, rate of death given you've lived up to that point so far. The uh, failure time and sensor times are independent, and that's pretty important uh, for making inferences. So our observed data is the X, so we know that whether it's an event or it's censored, and then this, this delta is a 1 or 0 depending upon whether it's an, an event or not. So very, very briefly, since this is going to be sort of a long video, five pages, um, the Kaplan-Meier estimate, we want to estimate the survival function with the probability of being greater than T. And one note is uh, that if, let's say we have, there's no censoring, so these are the event times. So if we, and let's just look at that at uh, T2. Um, it could be generically TI or TJ, but we'll look specifically at T2. So we want to find the probability of being greater than T2. Now, if that is equal to the probability of being greater than T1 and greater than T2, that intersection is just being greater than T2. But we write it like this because then this little uh, relationship plays a part. The intersection is the uh, probability of an individual and then this conditional. So this piece is written as probability greater than T1 times probability greater than T2 given T is greater than T1. Now this piece here, we can do the same thing as we did with this. And then this piece becomes the, these two probabilities. And then that just carries down. And being greater than uh, zero or T zero is one, so that drops out. So it's the product of these two probabilities. And then we can also take the one minus if we want. This is probability of being strictly greater than TI or T two in this case. Um, yeah, one to two. Uh, and so here it's one minus probability T is less than or equal to TI given you know that we're greater than TI minus one. And this can be thought of as, you know, to be the probability of being greater in some point is it's the it's the cumulative, you know, it's the probability of being greater than T1 given you've lived up to that point times the probability of being uh, greater than T2 given that you've lived up to that point. So you do it a cumulative. And I write that because that's going to, that's the sort of the general form of the Kaplan-Meier estimator. And there is a little bit of, assumption here that you have you you kind of know what the Kaplan Meyer estimator is which is here's the formula where D is the number of events and N I is the, is the number at risk at that point at a, at at TI an event so let's just jump right into deriving it as a mac, maximum likelihood estimator some call it an NP MLE non parametric maximum likelihood estimator um here, here's the likelihood, and I'm not going to derive it. I have a YouTube video that's titled Drive the Density and Likelihood for Sensor Data. And uh, this is actually not the true likelihood. There's a piece over here that uh, deals with the censoring mechanism, but this is the relevant piece to uh, making inferences ab about the uh, failure times. So this is really the only piece that they keep, and that's what we'll keep. So this is the product of several things. And um, I like to take complicated things and try to simplify them. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at this as a timeline. So we have T0, which is time 0. And then we have events, x1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 13. 
Now we do know whether they're censored or not, or whether they're an event. And if it's an event, we're going to call it a T. It's a T1, T2. Notice there's two people that had an event here. Uh, T3, T4, T5. And if it's censored, we're going to call it 1, 2. But the 0 means that it belongs in this interval. And here there's no censoring. Here this is the this 0 interval, the 1. This is the second one. So it's C1, 2. Third, third interval, nothing. Fourth interval, C1, 4, C2, 4, C3, 4, etc. Now um, we have an some additional notation if it, if there's no subscript on the C then that just tells us how many censoring events happened within the zeroth interval and there's two here no C1 is zero nothing C2 is one uh, there's no C3 C4 is three and then the D's tell me how many events happened at a specific time so if we were to write the likelihood for this function it would it would look like this so each so this s x1 contributes an uh, an s of x1 and that, since that's a center that contributes to s of x2 since this is an event and there's two of them it's f of t1 and then raised, there's two, D1 is two, so there's two of those. Um, we have, there's no C's here. Event two, there is one of those. There are two of these, so that comes here. Uh, there's an event at T4. And then S of X10, 11, and 12 contribute here, and then S of five. Now, there may be N of these, but I just wrote 13 of them out. And so we'll kind of go from there. Now, one thing is we want to maximize this likelihood. Okay. So really, I should put dot, dot, dot here. I don't have a pen because um, this, this can keep going. Now, we want to maximize L. Now, at the events, it's kind of easy. It's just, it's we know that specifically. Um, for here, how do we, you know, we want to maximize it. So one way that we can do it, since S is a non-increasing function, if we move these C's to the beginning of the interval, then instead of, so instead of calling it X1 and X2, we just call it, s of t0 then we've made this likelihood a little bit bigger and then we can do it for c12 if we move this back to t2 then we've made the likelihood just a little bit bigger so that's what the next step is so we take these s's and and move them backwards which increases the likelihood but and then we have c0 you know or two of these so we raise it and then this stays the same um and we can write this notice that there's no no censoring in here so if we call and the if so if we move if there were something we would move it back and call it s of t1 and then raise it to the c1 power but since it's zero this is zero something to the zero is is one um, and zero to the zero is one. So that, that doesn't factor into the likelihood. Here we do it. Uh, um, here we move it back. So this is X6, which is here. We move it back to T2 and raise it to how many there are. C2, F of three, uh, F of four. So here's the censoring between those two. There's nothing, so it doesn't contribute. There is, uh, there's three of these, so we move these uh, censored values back to T4 and raise it to that many. And we just keep going on and on and on, okay? So, <coughs> so the next step is we look at um, these, uh, these Fs, okay? So 
the the s of t zero the probability that we're greater than zero is one so this piece doesn't we can get rid of it and then here for the uh, f if we take the survival function at t one well if we take the survival function just to the left of t one so one minus epsilon and then subtract off t one that is f of t. Now remember this is a heuristic argument so technically we need to say as the limit of epsilon goes to zero you know and so but this one is essentially f okay and then here we bring it down so this f of uh, f of t2 would be s of t2 minus epsilon so we move just to the left ever so slightly and then subtract off f s of t2 and that gets us the f of t2 here okay and then we have s of t2 raised this is the censoring events and we keep doing that and I ran out of space so now remember our goal is to maximize this likelihood so since s is a non-decreasing function if we move it left so so if we move it left to a specific event, say, you know, the one just below this, so move it to S of T0, we've increased this likelihood some. This is a bigger positive number than that. And we still raise it to D1. This we keep the same. Um, here, we're just left of, of T2, but if we keep moving it left until we tell another event which happened at T1, then we've made this difference bigger. So the likelihood is bigger. Now we just keep doing that to all n observations. So now we can, we can rewrite this. So this is kind of grouped. If we look at this group and that group, and then we do that for all, say, k events, we can rewrite this as the product of from one to k of of this difference raised to the how many events happened at that that interval or that uh, that time ti and then the s of ti raised to the ci. It's the product of these. Now we're going to multiply this times a well chosen one, and what we do is we divide by s of t minus i, but there's di of them, so then we have to multiply s sub ti minus 1 di, and then this piece comes down here. So then we're going to multiply this by a well-chosen one, which um, this piece comes down, and then we uh, divide this by s of t minus i and there's ci of them so we have to multiply it times s of ti minus one and there's ci of them so that combines with this and there's di plus ci okay so in most books they go and from here that equals this okay so i put an arrow and i probably should put a question mark and then they go, well, this kind of looks like a binomial. And so, well, maximizing a binomial, that's straightforward. And, and then they show you the uh, estimate. So what I'm going to try to do in this video is fill in these gaps, okay? Because it's not obvious. This piece is because you divide by both and you get this. But going from here to here, it, it makes no sense. You know, it's not intuitive. So what I want to do is uh, we're going to go step one. Now remember that this is a product. So you, you let i equal one, fill it out, so you have that term. Then i equal two, there's going to be another term. And then three, then four, then all the way to k. So what we're going to look at is we're going to go backwards, though. We're going to look at uh, i equal k first. Okay? So that is this. Okay. So remember, we're starting here. So I equal K, so you plug in K to wherever all there's an I. So um, 
and then the, the, going from here to here is pretty easy so I just do that 1 minus s of tk s of tk minus 1 raised to dk um, and, and then this difference is here and that is here now this is where we think about it and I drew a little picture there's events that happen t1 t2 da, 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 to the last event tk now this is the last one so the only thing that we have at tk are deaths and censored observations so n is the number at risk which is this which is dk plus ck so um first of all we can replace dk plus ck with nk and that's what we do here right here so we put that as an nk now ck which is here ck and that scribble shouldn't be there so if dk plus ck equals nk dk minus or nk minus dk equals ck so this ck becomes nk minus dk okay so now what we do next is we we keep this at the i equal k all right so that kind of looks like a binomial and then we take this leftover term and move it to the uh, i equal k minus one so at this step so if we let i equal k minus one so the these three terms are from the uh, right here so we plug in k minus one into the eyes and we get this now this piece is is from the when i equals k so that comes down to here now let's look what we have here so um this comes down this comes down um and then what we do is we multiply this or we divide this one by t to k minus 2 and since there's n k of them we have to multiply it s of t minus 2 to the n k now this um is okay so then this is n k um and then so this can be combined to be k n k plus c k minus 1 and then these terms can be uh, combined to be nk plus dk minus 1 plus ck minus 1. Okay. So then, so these two terms combine to this, and that combines to this. And so how do we get that? And so if we're at tk minus 1, so we have uh, dk deaths here, and we have c or dk minus 1 deaths here, ck minus one uh censored here and then nk is how many observations we have here so if we have nk plus ck minus one plus dk minus one all those observations are really nk minus one so that and that you can just put an nk minus one so now here when we combine those we have nk which is this so that's all the observations this way and we have uh, ck which is here so n is actually all the observations so if we take nk minus dk that's going to be ck minus 1 plus nk which is what that is so we can replace that with nk minus 1 dk minus 1 well, this kind of looks like that binomial that we were looking at. So we keep this sort of at the k minus 1 step. And then this piece, we move to the k minus 2 step. Well, we repeat, we repeat, we repeat, and we get down to k minus 1. And so these are the three terms when we plug in i equal 1. And then this piece was carried down from the i equal 2 step. Um, so here that comes down and uh, we divide this by s of uh, t minus 0 
and there's n2 of them, so we have to multiply by s of t0. But remember, s of t0 is 1, so that, that kind of goes away. And this s of t0 goes away. So then we have, um, remember, this is divided by s of t0, so we have n2 plus c1 of those, which is actually n1 minus d1. So for the i step, we just have this, which looks like that binomial. So now if we only collect this, the terms that we kept at sort of each i, we get the, the product from i equals 1 to k of, of this, this statement here, which does look like a binomial. And if you were to maximize a binomial, you take the, the this probability, and it's less than 1 because this piece is greater than this piece. So you raise it to this term divided by how many there are, and there's ni. So this is maximized at, so if we think of this as a, as a probability, each, each i is maximized at this for ni minus di ni because it's a binomial. But if we multiply that up, we get this, okay? So now we have a system of equations, and if we look at just n equal 1, we have this, but s of t0, so greater than 0, is 1, so that drops out. So s of t1 is this, okay? s of t2 is s of t1 times this, you know, with our general formula, but s of 1 was this, so that goes in as the product. And we can just keep going down to down. And so in general, s of ti is the product of each of these terms. Now, the, the general Kaplan-Meier estimate doesn't have to be at those events. We can have uh, a time between events, but we can we only maximize it over those events. So for a general t, we take the product of all the ti's that are less than the t that we picked and multiply them together, which is this is the Kaplan-Meier estimator, and that's it. And so I hope you enjoyed the video. Now there's other ways you can maximize it and turn. You can take the likelihood and maximize it in terms of the hazard function and come up with the same uh, formula. So there's another approach. Maybe I'll do that in a video. Uh, this one was running long, so we only get this approach. But hope you enjoyed it. Please like the video. Uh, subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.